Shane Vaughn has always loved Donald Trump, maybe to the point of being in love. It's hard to tell at this point. Well, naturally, since the January 6th hearings started coming out, he's been getting kind of upset over it, and he's had some things to say. So I want to catch you up on who he is and show you how seemingly in love with Donald Trump he really is. And then we'll talk about his most recent clip where he criticized some of the witnesses from the January 6th hearings. Check this clip out. This one is from late April 2022. This is about a God that appointed a man. And you see, I've got enough Italian in me to know what loyalty means. Guy's a televangelist, a megachurch pastor, and has, as you can hear, pretty much worked Trump right into his religion. I don't say this about everybody, but I believe that this guy views Donald Trump as equally as important to prophecy or his religious beliefs as Jesus. He's up there. Here's the way it works for me. I love loyalty. Loyalty is a forgotten quality. Donald Trump, you fought for my family. My family will fight for you. How did Donald Trump fight for your family, Shane? Loyalty is earned. If somebody earns my loyalty, then I will have their back through thick and thin. But I'm not loyal to somebody who screws other people over, screws me over, or does something evil or wrong or whatever. I will stick by your side as long as you maintain morals through everything. No matter what, I'll stick by your side. This guy is confusing being loyal with being a sucker. Donald Trump broke the law. Donald Trump betrayed the country. And this guy is willing to be loyal to Trump rather than his own country, his own countrymen. You went in that White House and you made our life better. How? You made our economy better. You made our churches better. How? How? I don't understand. How? What did he do? How did Donald Trump make churches better? Just claiming that alone is weird. It is truly very strange. You allowed us the freedom to choose a vaccine if we wanted one or not. Ah, uh, because he was anti-vax originally. That's why he worded it that way. You allowed us the choice of taking a vaccine if we wanted, i.e. Donald Trump created the vaccine, which he didn't, by the way. But this guy believes that Trump created the vaccine and then allowed people to take it if they wanted. That's crazy, man. You fought for our freedom, and I'm not about to start second-guessing your choices and what you do. If you make a mistake, it'll be on you, sir. But I will be loyal. I'm not a Tino. I'm not a Valentino. Tino being Trumpist in name only. And then he came up with another name, which is Valentino, okay? I'm not a Valentino. I am a Trump supporter. Why? Because God chose the man, and I've got sense enough to know it, recognize it. I know where the blessing is. Let me tell you something. When you find a blessed man, when you find a blessed ministry, you better plant your feet under that blessing and it will fall down on top of you. That is just, wow. Um, so that's Shane Vaughn. That's how he feels about Trump. I feel comfortable saying it's crossed into in love territory and out of simply love territory. So here's why I want to talk about the guy, okay? There was a January 6th hearing recently held by Congress, and they had Cassidy Hutchinson as a witness. Cassidy Hutchinson was one of the aides in the White House. So there's a guy named Mark Meadows, and he was Donald Trump's chief of staff. Like, he ran everything, basically. Cassidy Hutchinson was Mark Meadows' top aide. So she was, like, one degree removed from Trump, basically. It went... Cassidy Hutchinson, Mark Meadows, Donald Trump. And her office was right there next to the Oval Office. They were all in one little group together, right? So she was right there in it. And she heard all of these plans and all of the, this stuff that was taking place. So she goes to the January 6th hearing to testify about what she heard about Donald Trump planning an insurrection, basically, right? I just wanted to read a couple of things that we learned from her testimony because Shane Vaughn talks about her in a second and is not very kind about it. 
Here's the first thing we learned. This is on Right Wing Watch, by the way, Right Wing Watch's website. The title of this article is White House Insider Confirms Trump Did Not Want to Stop Violence, Said Pence Deserved to Be Hung. Here's the first point. Trump and Meadows, what Mark Meadows, again, chief of staff for Donald Trump. Trump and Mark Meadows knew there was a significant threat of violence on January 6th. Trump was told January 6th rally goers were armed. He ordered them to the Capitol anyway. He was angry they weren't letting the people that had weapons into the rally, and he tried to get the metal detectors removed so that they would allow them in anyways. And he said, they're not here to hurt me. Of course, implying that he knew that they were there to hurt somebody else. Trump wanted to go to the Capitol so badly that he grabbed the steering wheel and lunged at his Secret Service agent. He was in the car with the Secret Service agent who was driving him back to the White House, and he said, take me to the Capitol, and the Secret Service agent basically said, I'm not taking you to the Capitol. We don't have the resources. We haven't planned it out. It's not safe. And Trump grabs the wheel and says, I'm the fucking president. Take me to the Capitol now is what he told the Secret Service agent. Trump asked Meadows to get in touch with Roger Stone and Michael Flynn to meet with the Proud Boys and the Oath Keepers, the leaders of those two extremist groups. And they did, in fact, communicate with the Proud Boys and the Oath Keepers and plan the events that took place on January 6th. This is pretty damning testimony that she gave. And she was right there. Her office was like two offices away from the Oval Office or something like that. She was on the same floor. She was working with Donald Trump's top aide, his chief of staff. Here's another one. Rioters chanted, hang Mike Pence. Trump thought Pence deserved it. And after finding out that the rioters were chanting, hang Mike Pence, he then tweeted, Mike Pence betrayed us. Team Trump is attempting to influence witness testimony. That was another thing we learned um from the january 6th hearing okay so she was the key witness in this january 6th hearing there were there have been others i think we're uh, i don't know seven hearings deep now she was only one of many witnesses that have testified so what does shane vaughn have to say about old cassidy hutchinson i mean this woman by the way she's a trump supporter she's a trumpist she's a maga all the way she believed in this movement that's why she was on Trump's staff. That's why she's so high up in the movement, because she believed in it. So what does Shane Vaughn think of her now? This is late June 2022. Little witch standing there lying on the president of the United States of America, the only legitimate one, and you're sitting there lying through your teeth because you are a witch. You are a rebellious Jezebel. Okay, interesting. But Shane, what if she's not lying? She was under oath when she said all this stuff. You know who isn't under oath when they're making all their counterclaims? Donald Trump. But this guy will believe absolutely anything that Donald Trump says. And the reason that he's willing to do that, to believe anything he says, no matter what, is because he thinks he was appointed by God to be the president. And he believes Biden is a demon in human skin that set out to reverse prophecy and succeeded seemingly. That's where we're at. That's where Shane Vaughn is in his head. Jezebel, with your little lazy spirit standing there and you look like you're a walking zombie. You lied, you lied, you lied, you lied. We know you lied, you know you lied. You're a liar. Give us an example, point something out instead of just name calling. Tell us what she lied about. Tell us exactly what you don't like. Tell us exactly how she lied, what she lied about, and how you know that she lied. He doesn't need evidence. It's not about evidence. It's about the fact that Trump is ordained by God, chosen by God. He's his chosen man to be president. And anybody standing in the way of that works for Satan, or is Satan, or is a demon. So that's uh, that's Shane Vaughn's take on the January 6th situation. It's truly sad that this guy is so deep in his head and so willing to back somebody up who doesn't give a shit about him. This guy has always viewed Trump as equal to Jesus, practically. Listen to this clip of Shane Vaughn. This is early May 2021. He makes a few comparisons that are a little more over the line than I'm comfortable with. At this point... 
Trump had been banned from Facebook and Twitter, I believe. And they were trying to find a way around that. They were trying to find some way to, like, parrot his message for him or something. Check this one out. We need 100,000 patriots to become reporters for Donald Trump. Get his words out there since they wanted to be so smart that they wound up being stupid because they made the same mistake that Satan made when he killed Jesus Christ. Uh, short, small correction there, Shane. Satan did not kill Jesus. God sent Jesus back to earth to die for people's sins, didn't he? Jesus was not killed by Satan. Just want to make sure we got this straight. Kind of a weird thing to hear from a preacher, from a televangelist, who claims to be a religious leader, right? Not only that, you know what else this guy claims? I was a doctor of theology. I was the youngest ordained evangelist in America at 14 years old. Needless to say, the youngest ordained minister was not 14. They were four years old. It's a guy named Marjo. Shane Vaughn was not the youngest ordained minister in America or the world or anywhere else, honestly. Nor does he have a doctorate in theology. I feel this is evidence enough that he's sitting here telling us that Jesus was killed by Satan. Theologically and historically incorrect, Shane. That Satan made when he killed Jesus Christ. By killing that one man and killing his voice, he created a world full of little Christians that echo the message of Christ. See? Stupid on the devil's part. The Bible says, had Satan known what was going to happen, he would never have crucified Jesus Christ. Where does it say that? Can you give me a chapter and verse there, old buddy? I don't remember that part of the Bible. Weird. ...to happen, he would never have crucified Jesus Christ. Because what he did was he started a harvest of Christians that echo the message. He only had one man to deal with. Now he's got a whole population full of us. Same thing they're doing with Trump. Let them crucify him. But we're now the echo. See, this is another comparison to Jesus that's weird. How many comparisons is this guy going to make to Jesus? And we're going to put it on every page, every Twitter account, everything we got. Now, because the oversight board didn't rule that we couldn't share Trump content, it's allowed on Facebook for now anyway. So take advantage of it while we can. I'm ordaining all of you right now as evangelists of the Trump revival. Honestly, dude. 16 too many comparisons between Trump and Jesus. This guy truly, honestly, really does, to the bottom of his heart, believe that Trump is basically the new Messiah. Equally as important in God's plan as Jesus was. This is bizarre stuff. Check this one out. Early April 2022. He is the hammer of Yahweh for the nation of Israel. He's talking about Donald Trump, the hammer of Yahweh for the nation of Israel. And also, he's talking about America. He believes that America is the new Israel. As a matter of fact, that clip I played just a second ago, there's another part to it that I didn't play. Every signer of the Declaration of Independence were descendants of the tribes of Israel. Israel. We can trace it. We know it. No. No, that's completely incorrect. And he wrote down, wow. we are going, he wrote a course, to new Israel. New Israel, New Israel, and when they came off the ship, they didn't plant an American flag, they planted the Christian flag mm -hmm. on the soil, they dedicated, George Washington knelt and prayed, dedicated America where the Twin Towers stand or stood, that's where America came into covenant with Yahweh, with God, was where the Twin Towers stand. Wow. Isn't that something? That is where George Washington prayed, right? There's a chapel right outside the Twin Towers where George Washington, that picture of him praying by the horse, that's where it happened. That's where he dedicated our nation in covenant to God. If you will make us a great nation, deliver us from tyranny, then we will serve you. And he gave the nation to God at that point. So the covenant with God is no longer between God and Israel. It's between God and America. He believes this place, America, to be the new Israel. That's what he calls it. So when you hear him say what he said a second ago here. He is the hammer of Yahweh for the nation of Israel. He's talking about America. He thinks that America is, the, is new Israel. Round and round we go. He says it was stolen because the hammer of the Lord keeps beating at the rock. 
to reveal the rot. Am I reading this correctly? I think what he's saying is the hammer of the Lord keeps beating at America to expose the rot. So I think he's saying God made the Democrats cheat in the election so that it would expose them for what they are, cheaters, basically, right? Is that, am I reading this correctly? Well, if I remember, I think you said, Shane, that Donald Trump was guaranteed to win the election because God told it to you in prophecy, right? And here we are with no Trump as the president. Kind of weird, right? Is God making Trump lose or is God making Trump win? Which one is it? It can only be one. You could say that the United States political system is in for a pounding, and the name of that Trump is Don. The name of that Trump is Donald. That's why God said through his servant, Kim Clement, I will raise up the next president. His name will be Donald. Yeah, Kim Clement is a supposed prophet who claimed or prophesied that Donald Trump was going to win the election. I think he claimed that in, I don't know, 2009 or 10 or something. Yeah. Big surprise. Donald Trump, this big famous billionaire who's been talking about running for president. Big surprise. He's going to run for president one of these days. You know what? I actually have that clip. Let me see when it was. Yeah, this actually was 2007, I think, when Kim Clement made this claim that Trump was eventually going to run for president. And he made a lot of other very specific claims about Donald Trump and whether or not he was going to win and what was going to happen when he did and the things that he was going to say and blah, blah, blah. Half of his claims were wrong. The other half were right. It, it was hit or miss. But Shane Vaughn's going with the old Texas sharpshooter fallacy. Pick out the hits and claim that they were revealed by God and ignore the misses. Texas sharpshooter fallacy. Do you know why God told that to Kim Clement in 14? Because he had told it to us in 09. I will raise up a hammer. And now he finishes that prophecy. I will raise up a man by the name of Donald. And the good news is, ladies and gentlemen, God raised up that hammer, pounded away at the United States and saved America temporarily, holding back the agenda of the left. But the enemy came back in and now Donald Trump must return to finish his work. But it will be after war. This is going to be a war war like you've never seen yeah so that's shane vaughn um the guy is too emotionally invested in donald trump you shouldn't be this emotionally invested in anything or anybody honestly the only way to get to this point is to have like a religious belief about somebody or something like people do not get this emotional over strawberry shortcake People don't get this emotional over toaster scrambles. It doesn't happen because it's not a religious belief. Mix religion into things and people will get downright homicidal, which seems to be what happened with Shane Vaughn here. So here's my question. Trumpism has obviously incorporated itself into religion, but is Trumpism going to become a new theology, a new religion? And persist after Trump dies or after this generation of people die out? Is it going to persist into a second generation? Is it going to die out or is it going to retain its status as a religion indefinitely? I mean, who who the hell was Jesus? Just some dude, right? And somehow some gigantic religion formed up out of that. Evangelicals have effectively made Donald Trump part of their theology. I mean, we see an example of it right here. Is that going to persist into the next generation or is it going to die off with Donald Trump? Let me know what you think in the comments.